the financial side, there is no doubt about it. Autodesk grows faster than any other mid-market program developer. And 2006 posted a significant, almost 30% growth for the Manufacturing Solutions division. And the $330 million the division had in revenues certainly puts Autodesk on the top of the mid-market, leaving the toughest competitor SolidWorks some $30 million behind. But what about technology? Well, when Autodesk had its European 2008 program version launch in London in mid-February, the North European manager Mark Paraskeva talked a lot on integration and how Autodesk presently focuses on building in seamlessness in the product suite inventor series. So Mark, uh, which are the major enhancements when it comes to the product suite 2008 from Autodesk? Well, I think the big change that customers are seeing on the 2008 release is we're moving beyond kind of the basics of design and how the output looks and how it's generated. And really, we're trying to focus a lot more about how things work. So really, what we're giving our customers is the possibility to experience that design before it gets turned into reality. Talk, uh, talk a lot about integration, but not only into Autodesk products, also into other programs. Correct. So we've done a lot of work at integrating the various products together uh, within the Autodesk family. But importantly, it's not just about connecting some of our 2D products and 3D products. We've, we've got a lot more we've got a lot more capability in terms of our external interfaces to third-party tools as well. Yes, integration in focus, but not only in between the 3D components. Autodesk has a large 2D customer base and with the new DWG True Connect it gets even easier for the users to let product data flow in between AutoCAD and Inventor and vice versa of course. Which seems to be a good idea since for instance electronics nowadays is an important part of the MCAD design process. Not to mention that this also might make it easier for 2D users to migrate to 3D. We still see a lot of companies moving over from 2D to 3D. Can that stream remain? Absolutely. Um, we've probably only got something like between 10 and 15 percent of our of our install-based customers onto 3D, and so there's still a lot of opportunity for a large part of our customer base to move. And really, it's all about having a richer model because the difference between a 2D model and a 3D model is once you have a model in 3D, you can do so much more with it. You can do so much more analysis, you can do so much more modeling, you can do so much more simulation. And again, back to what I first said, you can experience a lot more of the design before you build anything. On the subject, a richer model. Let's go into another of the interesting integrations that comes along with the 2008 version of Inventor series, namely Alias. This visualization and A-class surfaces tool was bought by Autodesk only a year ago. Yet, in 2008 version, the company has already created an inventor integration. Not a perfect one, just a bridge that works. But more important, what use can an inventor customer in a smaller or a medium-sized business have of a solution that mainly is used amongst advanced high-end automotive and aerospace OEMs? And by the way, how do you work with the alias files in the inventor environment? The A-class surfacing tools that alias has are really world-class tools. Uh, and as a result, mid-market can use those to get really high-quality organic shapes um, to a point where they can go to manufacture straight away from the surfaces that they've created uh, with these quality tools. So there's a lot to be gained. Uh, what use do you think an inventor customer could have of Alias? What Alias will bring to an inventor customer is the ability to have free form in their designs. Uh, Sweden's known for its design, its product design, and much of that is free form. Uh, an inventor user hasn't had that freedom for freeform surface as he will now have with the Alias products. We would take the surfaces or the models that we create in Alias and transfer them using DWG uh, with the tight integration that we have today and overlay them on let's say an inventor model uh, that is the engineering model or vice versa. We could take the engineering model 
from Inventor into Alias and maybe start to sketch out. So, freeform surfaces and great connections between Inventor and Alias, fine. But that's only one obstacle. An even harder one to overcome is about the pricing. Alias is not an inexpensive product, but Graham Barry claims that also SMB companies can reach a fairly fast return on investment. I think they can afford it when you look at what Alias products and in, and in fact Autodesk products deliver across the whole of the workflow from your original concept through to the manufacturer of your product. Um, Autodesk can help the customers throughout the whole of that process and help them in ways of getting better designs, uh, more realistic ideas of the designs early on in the process. And that delivers the right product probably ahead of schedule, which returns to the companies a lot more profit. But how will Autodesk take care and develop the traditional stock of customers in the high-end area? That's another question. I think we've already seen in the year that Autodesk has had Alias that, that it's put more emphasis behind the products that we have. Uh, we've come out with a new product um, and that speaks volumes about what Autodesk is as a company, the financial foundation that it has and the effort that it's putting into these products. It certainly recognises the high-end customers that we have. But the best answers to the existing customer questions may be came when Renault and Honda recently announced the renewal of their deals concerning Alias Studio and Maya. Remains the challenge to persuade the SMB companies to add the Rolls-Royce of surfaces to their product development processes which isn't the easiest thing in the world.